I'm taking a picture! <laughs> how, how do it work? I don't know. It works like this. So oh. You go up, you go up. <laughs> Everybody, welcome. Thank you. So, these are the three cables that we'll be working on today. And I've got all the parts laid out here. The first thing that I'd like to talk to you guys about, usually when somebody comes to a rudder build, they've already kind of dug in and looked online at the manual, so they kind of get a vague idea. I like to go through and show more or less what it is that we use and how we use it. So, Rance has always used three assembly manuals. Um, one of them is a parts manual text manual and a figure is drawing. So the, the text manual is basically going to be nothing but, but text. And there's no drawings, no, no figures, anything on this one. And it'll take you from the very first step, which is what we're going to be working on today. Um, it'll, it'll guide you. It'll, be, it'll call out what we're doing. We're working on the rudder. We're doing the rudder skin forming and the rudder assembly. And by the end of step number 13, we're completely done with it. So, the, the text manual will sometimes reference like a figure drawing, like it says here, refer to section two of parts and figure drawings. Um, and if there's something needed, it'll tell you, refer to the parts manual. Um, then we'll have the parts manual. The parts manual does have everything identified that you will use in a specific step. So here, for example, we've got the rudder frame and skin assembly. Now this one will have specific information on the parts. When you guys receive your kit, every single part be it a nut, bolt, cotter pin, skin, will have a label and it'll be identified as a part number, quantity, and such. The, the parts manual sometimes can be tricky, and I've noticed this just from experience from doing the rudder builds. Um, there are areas, if you guys notice, like for example, here there's a lot of, lot of numbers all bunched together in very small parts. You know, some are washers, some are nuts, and it's important to be able to identify what goes where like I said, sometimes we'll do an exploded drawing, like here the, the exploded drawing of that hinge assembly, just to show what's, what all is included. But sometimes like this, this little area usually gives people a lot, of, a lot of trouble because there's a thin washer on one side, a thick washer on the other. On the bottom bolt, it's backwards. So you've got to pay a lot of attention to that. Another thing that I notice as an advantage is many people will have their assembly manuals in a PDF format and they'll view them on a, on a tablet, an iPad, whatever. At that point, you can expand it, and then you can really see the detail. We don't do that here. Mm -hmm. A builder, you know, I don't know, four or five builds ago, said, well, I can just do that on my iPad, and I can just, and he showed it to me. I thought, well, that's really cool. We don't have that here. What we have here is aging eyes, and it's, you know, we're, I'm halfway between, okay, where does that go? Yeah, I think right. it goes there. there it it's it's kind of tough, but you've got to pay a lot of attention to that. I kind of laugh at this because we have a skill test that we do for, for future employees, mm. and it purposely is a piece of the rudder, and it's this part here. <laughs> and in the history of our rudder builds, only one person has gotten it right. Oh, we do it on purpose. Geez. We do it on this side of the spar. It's a thick washer with a thin on the back. Then there's a bolt on the other direction with the reverse, mm -hmm. just to see if they're paying attention. It's really hard. To, it's, I understand it's very really hard to do, but we'll have to pay attention to that when we get to this point. Then there is the figures manual. And the figures manual will usually not have, it shouldn't have part numbers. And it has just a reference to the specific assembly, like well, any page that we go to here's for the seat back orientation. So it's going to tell you, you know, a, a specific dimension that you're supposed to cut off. It'll tell you like an orientation, which way the figure goes. In the case of the rudder, it's such a simple part. I mean, we'll be done by four o'clock. We'll have five rudders finished that it doesn't require a lot of, uh, of information as far as figures go. It does have one figure that we reference to, and it's basically the procedure that we use to curl the leading edges of the, of the rudder, which you can see they're laying on the table. They're bent at the trailing edge, but the leading edges are straight. Well, we've got to curl those around. This just basically, it's explained in the text, but here is the figures drawing that will tell us more or less the procedure that we're going to use. Um, this same process that we're going to use to build the rudder is identical to the ailerons, flaps, the elevator, and to some extent the horizontal and the wing. Um, size of table, many people I, I know, I, I read it on the forums, are 
questioning back and forth what size of a table. Um, <laughs> build the entire airplane on this table. This is the only table I use, and it builds wings, and it builds a fuselage, tail cone mating. Yes, the tail cone will stick out a little bit. It will probably stick out to where less is standing, and the cage sticks out about here. But the important parts that we're working on here, it's sufficient. So a 4 by 12 is, is, is sufficient. Obviously, a straight table is necessary, but you're going to see by what we're going to do today that we don't depend entirely on a straight table to build any of the surfaces. So the process that we use to build the wing, all flying surfaces, rudders, um, is supported. The wing has a specific jig that it's supported in to keep it straight. Um, and the rudder, what we do is we will build it on a couple of aluminum blocks and we use a digital protractor to level those blocks so that they're perfectly parallel. So theoretically, we could build that thing on the floor, we could build it outside on the grass. As long as we shim it to where the protractor says this is 0 0.5 and this is 0 0.5, it doesn't matter what's underneath. As long as those two are parallel, you're gonna have a perfectly straight rudder. It doesn't matter if it's like this or like that, as long as it's parallel to each other, which is what we do with our wing jigs, our supports for elevators, our supports for the horizontal, so as long as those parameters are met, you will come out with a perfectly straight part. But we do like to have a nice straight table. Nobody wants a crooked table, so it's kind of nice to depend on that. Um, these wooden tables are, are pretty straight, but they always require some shimming. This one being the exception. Um, this is a table that uh, was specifically made to keep straight, and it has adjusters all around that we, we keep it very straight. If somebody wants to build it right over there, that's fine, but I usually prefer that they do it on a table, just so that they get in the habit of learning how to uh, verify that the, the blocks and sometimes I'll even do that two or three times during the build I'll flip it over and I'll check it again I mean the digital protractor is there anyway so we check it and make sure that it's straight and once we're popping rivets because with a skin once it's on and that last rivet is popped it doesn't matter what it's gonna stay straight it'll never move from that position you can't straighten that like a fabric wing so that is basically what I wanted to start with yep. the deburring tip could be actually put in anything it could be put in a and a drill that could be used by hand. It's just a, mm -hmm. a, 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 a very, very simple bit. Um, it, the, the dog way, just because the name, because it's super easy to to, uh, to use. But what I wanted to talk about, not as so much what deburring methods we use, because we've been using drills, we've been using all sorts of things. It's it's the the two extremes: deburring too much and not deburring enough. So. Basically, when we have a surface, I'm, I'm attempting to, to draw a cross cut of a, of, a, of a sheet of material that we're drilling into. This is, you know, amplified. But when we, when we look to drill a hole in this, and we, and we create, let's say, a little, a little burr, sometimes it's on both sides. If we were to sandwich another piece on top of it, you know, and, and try to run a rivet or a fastener through it, be it a screw, a rivet, whatever, um, the stuff that's in it, that little burr, is what we would call an unstable matter. It can, it can be squashed, it can, it can move, it will render not a tight, precise fit, right? I think. Burrs are bad. What happens if we take that same piece, which has been calculated, you know, this is probably a 20,000, 30,000 piece of aluminum, and we've drilled our hole, and we decide to take our roundy round and go to town on it, and we deburr it to the point where we've created a little crater. It looks nice, it looks very shiny, but when we do this, we have taken the thickness of this part, which might have been 30 thousandths, and the effective thickness of it is now only this much. We weaken that part just by deburring it too much. So deburring too much and deburring not enough are both bad. 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 We, because we have to file and stand anyway to prep these parts for, for painting, um, whenever possible, you'll see your skins. You can see the marks along those lines on the, on the, they've been sanded. Sanding is probably the most effective. It doesn't remove more material than you need to. It doesn't create the crater and it gets rid of that bump. So there's a lot of deburring to do. We do drill holes along the spars, along the ribs. We want to clean that out so that we don't have this effect of just debris and deburs on the inside. But when you do deburr, uh, and there is a lot of it, it's so easy to just take this tool and just keep going, keep going, keep going. And it looks nice, but you only want to remove just, a, just enough material. Mm -hmm. So that's all I wanted to touch on as far as deburring. Is the first thing that we do is the rudder skin forming. Those first nine steps only deal with forming that leading edge of the, of the rudder. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, after that, after we get that done, it's only from step one to step 13 and we're finished with it. It's not that much. 
said, I only have two sets, which we only use one. We never, we don't, there's nobody else that builds here um, other than myself, so. Really, you're the sole builder, huh? I'm the only builder. Wow. Everybody else is, what, avionics and engines? Mm -hmm. and... Yeah, it's a very small crew. Got all the pressure. <laughs> I do. I do the entire uh, airframe assembly here. Wow. I built all 14. I'm starting my 15th that we've made. I was curious about the numbers. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, ready to fly. Uh, this one is 14th, which is that wing. Um, that's what I was working on earlier today when Rich was here this morning. Okay. So the blue one that you're shipping today is number 13 or 14? That should be 13. Okay. Number 13. Cool. Um, and then there's somebody that does our complete firewall forward. Um, I haven't seen Ryan here, but he's a couple guys impossible to miss. He's six foot eleven. So, oh, wow. <laughs> and then Tony does all of our avionics. Oh, yeah, he yeah. does the windshield and and uh, a couple other things. Yeah, Cope awesome. assembles out here with us, but he's our painter. He's a master painter. Everything you see has been painted by him. So, cool. so who does first flight? Randy does all of it all the time. He's the only one that flies the uh, the first flight. Uh oh, don't look now. <laughs> Got everybody here, huh? Where All but John? one. Who? Gentleman named John. Where's John? Are you sleeping? Maybe you should start with Adam. We're starting with Adam, yeah. We... And then uh, he'll just have to catch up. Yeah. And by that time, we'll have several experts to help him. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's right. That's my plan, anyway. <laughs> And of course, we are looking for more assembly help in the assembly hall. So Eddie will be watching and seeing who could be a viable candidate. <laughs> <laughs> Ordered up this beautiful spring weather to sell haze on us, huh? Well, you know, haze is what haze is the best kept secret. You know, in the whole, we don't want people moving to Kansas. That ought to tell you something right there. <laughs> Hey, thanks to the Pilot Network for sponsoring this episode. You know, a great network can be the difference between having the career we love or the job we need. For 30,000 plus members, the Pilot Network has reconnected old aviation colleagues, provided knowledge in the face of the unknown, and extended the helping hand to those coming up in this awesome career field. If you're a career aviation professional or are interested in becoming one, don't hesitate to become part of one of the fastest growing networks for aviation professionals. It's truly my first stop when I have airline related questions from bidding my line to what's happening at other airlines to even grabbing a discount on a mortgage. Along with being a correspondent, I've also helped answer fellow members' questions about scoring a military pilot job. Also, the TPN podcast is one of my favorites to listen to. They get fascinating guests from all around the industry and ask thought-provoking questions. So visit TPN today at thepilotnetwork.com. A little fastener, it's a temporary fastener, it holds things together. They are color coded and the color indicates the size that they're designed to go through the hole. Like here we have a number 40 size hole, this is a number 30 size hole. The silver are for the number 40 size holes and the copper ones that we'll use in a little bit are, are designed to go in the number 30 size hole. There's a brass one that's designed to go in the number 11 size hole. We have some quarter inch ones, but these are the ones that we use for now. So. This tool is not included in your kit. You're instructed to use a piece of PVC tubing, um, but you will render the same result. What we have is holes drilled on the on one side of it. I've got it marked here, notch, which is this. And we have to attach the skin to that tube with those clecos. We have to use every single hole because when we when we roll this, it really puts a lot of tension on that skin. So we have to make sure that we use so we're going to purchase a piece of PVC and then it'll mark tell you the, the diameter. Yes, Got you'll it. mark the, a center line along it, yep. and then use this actual piece to to mark go ahead it. and drill it. Yep. Yes, you can use it as a as a guide to drill it. Do you mark it first or just? I do like to mark it. I'll take mm -hmm. it to uh, to a doorway. Is the best way. Put it in the door jam mm -hmm. and use that uh, the corner or a, or a or a piece of angle. Right. Mark your center line, just so you get at least this hole and that hole perfectly centered. If you get those, there's no reason these should not be. You can see there's a line, a very vague line here that we use mm -hmm. to mark it. Okay, yes, you can yes. almost see that line. We mark it on something and uh, everything else should line up perfectly. If you want to grab a few clecos and, um, and just start to put them in. So the very first step is rolling, rolling the rudder, huh? Rolling the leading edge, cool. yes. First cleco. I'm finally figuring that out. Need my glasses, I think. <laughs> there you go. 
It's got to go further, right? I, no, you can let it go. I think it's... I think it's yeah, oh, okay. It's right I see. Great. Perfect. We'll grab a few more. And... No, boy. <laughs> I'm done. That's it. That's, it. That's your timer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So very brief. So did you sand this with sandpaper or a wheel, uh, like a Dremel? Uh, they use a, 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 a okay? DA sander. Yeah. Yeah. Now the way they did this, because, well this part is obviously before they put this bend in it, it's a big open sheet. Right. The minute it's been cut on the, on the CNC machine, before they even take it off, they take that DA sander and they, they clean all the burrs, so there are no burrs on it. Yeah. Um, and they make sure they do that also only on this line because once there's a rivet there, it's hard to sand for prepping right. around the head. This sure. will still be accessible. You know, right. Coke will take sandpaper, mm -hmm. take um, uh, Scotch Bite or whatever right. it uses mm -hmm. to this part here. But it's important we have them do this. So instead of just right. around the hole, you do the hole. The so, whole so then it's pre prepped. So, right. it's pre -prepped. Yeah. so you've, uh, and there's no burrs on the inside yeah. and there's no burrs on the outside. So. so, like this skin wouldn't really need to be burr. Mm -hmm. No. So, Eddie, what is. This isn't 20.4, is it? This is 6061 T6. Okay. 6061 T6. Yeah, because it, it, with the 2024, if you do that DA 79, you're really screwed. Yeah. Explain that figure drawing, but we've got to take this, flip it over. Mm -hmm. We want the clecos on the edge of the table, on the very edge, and we need these two holes to be exposed, okay? Mm -hmm. So these two holes are going, we're going to put these yep. tubes in it, and we're going to roll this around. Now, the reason for this block, what I use with this block is because when we roll it around, the clicos will come around and catch this edge. They won't let us go far enough. So I just use this as a step to hold it in place there. What we want to do here, I don't know which is easier for you if you're left or right-handed, but this, this is just a handle to rotate it around. The important thing to do while we're rotating this is never, never let it lift up like this. We want to put pressure down and hold it flat on the table. We'll stick this tube inside. We'll roll it up, and the, the magic number is somewhere between 180 and 190 degrees. We just have to go past it. We want to see those clicos past center line. So 190 degrees, whatever, give or take 12 and a half degrees more. That's what we're going to go <laughs> So we'll stick this in on the bottom. Oh, yeah, because you're going to get stuck, yeah. And press downward yep. so that it's contacting the table. We're going to go up, up, up and around. Press down towards the table. There you go. Yeah. A little bit past, right there. Let it bounce back. I think this side might have been easier for you. <laughs> yeah. Could have been, yes. Yeah. And see, it, it pretty much ends up perfectly nice. vertical. Nice. Now, when this is assembled, this side, as we supply it, has a little bit of a bend on the very mm -hmm. leading edge. Right. That goes on the outside. That's just to help keep it really nice and tight. It'll look very nice when it's finished. So that is always going to go on the outside. you got to be careful that the other one doesn't overlap on top of this one. But, but uh, like on the wing where it comes to the leading edge, that's where we're going to put that in by pulling through. The wing forming tool? Edge forming tool. Yes. Yeah. The wing forming tool. Wing yeah. forming tool. Okay. Yes. Yes, that is correct. So, so now, what would you use to form that? Yeah, that would be that, that, oh, slight. They, they, they have a pliers. There's a bunch of tools. No, my favorite, my favorite tool by far is this one. Yeah. But some people, some people really like the one that looks like a like a uh, vice grip with mm -hmm. the two rollers. I hate that tool. Okay. I cannot get that tool to work for me. It works for other people. I bought one of those. This one is what we use, okay. and it yeah. works fantastic. Then the radius that we need, but it's estimated for spring back. It'll roll. We don't want it to be this shape. Oh, this okay. is just what's used. And that'll get us the. You'll see once we have it oh, all okay. together, it's going to form perfectly. So. Okay. The question was about this gap. If that's okay, and it sounds like it, it is because the radius cool. of this tube is right. not quite as large as the radius of the leading edge of the rudder. We want to put pressure down on it. Yeah, so it's the contact. It's not going to damage the part. The radius is going to be different from here to there if you don't have it on the table all the way. So. Ready? Ready. And you want to go past 180 degrees. A little bit past. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That's about right. Is it okay if there's like a little it. bit of a bow? In that's the natural. Thing. Unfortunately, the tube yeah. is, is thin walled. It's not thick enough to maintain that. Because PVC it, will be even weaker. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, PVC, okay. but it does a good job. Most people does have it? done it well with the PVC. Okay. Now, there's very thick wall PVC. I don't know if it resists torsion well. The aluminum tube resists it perfectly, but... Yeah, I think I'm going to get some of the aluminum to, to make more. And it, I don't even remember the, the diameter. There's two different ones because you can see uh, flap skin right up there on that. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah. Somebody got one that was inch and a quarter ID, which ended up being almost like over three eighths, inches, five eighths OD. And they couldn't figure out why the why the leading edge was like this because it, it was over there. Different, different diameter. Uh, it was too big of a radius. So. It turns out if you hold a camera, yes. you don't have to do work. Yes. yes. Your ailerons and flaps will have it. Elevator, trim tab, uh, horizontal skins, uh, leading edge of the vertical. So it's quite a bit that, that needs to be trimmed away. I just do it at this point because it's the fact that it's laying flat. Well, I guess you look over the whole thing, like there's nothing else on here that could be a pin to have it. Yes. Yeah. I guess Eddie's point was that it's right here, step five on the rotor assembly. Talking to the camera. Uh, but he just does it now because it, it's what easier or just why not you know just because I know it's gonna have to get done Maybe okay. it's the fact that I prefer to handle it while it's flat as opposed to already having sure. that, that curve here yeah. But you'll see in a second when we do cut them off that it makes no difference at okay. all okay. Thanks. Uh, By the time it tells us to do that We've already assembled most of the rudder and we're gonna have tools and rivets and stuff here right yeah. now The table is clean so for me it's easier to just go ahead and trim that now okay. and get that cool. get that out of the way so. We didn't order another rudder this is the one that's going on, <laughs> so we better not mess it up. <laughs> oh, no, this will be a good one then. You just put it in Rich's kit. <laughs> I had my hands on your rudder? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> I don't know about that. Rose, Liz, when are you get in your kit, you think? When do they tell you? When are we getting it? Yep. It's on the trailer outside. Yeah, we're yeah. loaded up. We're oh, that inside. worked out great, huh? Oh, you were Sitting behind me on lunch. I, went, I saw the, the, the two crates. And I that's thought, awesome. That's, but you were coming from, from the other direction. I thought, well, that's weird. Are they bringing it back? <laughs> Did they not like it? <laughs> no they refunds. Changed, they changed their mind. <laughs> they changed their mind. <laughs> Is that the complete field out there in the case? Randy, when are you uh, getting yours? It's sitting on the dock. Yeah! Uh, 29th of March, so that week they're going to ship it. But awesome. Shelly was showing me around yesterday and I came around the corner and it was sitting right there. Yeah. So she got my picture on sitting on it. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's been almost a year. Wow. Just about a year. Right, there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll come and watch push you. Push it down. Okay. So we'll yeah. Yeah. About there, yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Ooh, you want to go a little further? Yeah, I think so, because they're not quite 90, so let's push it down. Cool. For that. Oh, yeah. It's looking good. For my amateur eyes, looks great. It does look pretty good. I would say that looks dope. That looks dope. Two SoCal guys doing it. What's up? <laughs> Killer dude. <laughs> yeah, bro. Sick. Are we doing this right, Eddie? Just hanging up? Or do we need to flip it or anything? You'll need to flip it to bend it. It's, right. It, but it, yes, it's it, looks, okay. it looks correct. Yeah. Okay. The bottom one looks perfect. Beautiful. Yep, very good. Oh. Thanks. I'll yeah, I'll take this one off too. You want me to flip it? Sure, go ahead. Are you ready? I am ready. You should be straight on. Uh, there? Yep. From my professional experience. You're doing great on this side, Leslie. You're doing good. So you'll even hear it click. Sometimes it'll pop really loud. Will it yeah. creak? That's, it's, it's, that's where the words came from. Automatopoeia? Yeah. <laughs> Eddie, where are you from? Originally, I was born in Las Vegas. I lived there for 13 years. Then my dad retired from a lifelong job and moved to Mexico. So I lived in Mexico for 25 years. So what part? Central Mexico, just north of Mexico City. Okay. City Hidalgo. Hidalgo. City Pachuca. Okay. Nice. Um, and then I moved back here for this job, and I've been here since 2002. Cool. Going on 20 years. Great job. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Third <laughs> file. Is that the? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying not to angle this so that I don't remove more material. Uh -huh. I don't want to remove material. Here, I'm just using it as a guide. Sure. Put a pressure on the down one. Man, that was easy. That was super easy. Yeah, that <laughs> came off really nice. Are you worried about that bend there? 
Looks like he's milked the Beautiful. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so now if you want to cut the same side as a right-handed, you do this way. Follow. If you want to draw a line, that's fine. They have a sharpie over there. Like I said, just. Yeah. Oh shit! Can you imagine all these questions that we're gonna have? And they're all such small details. I know, but you don't want to mess it up. No pressure. These things are super good cutters on this. I don't mind filing that off. Yeah. We were a little bit hesitant cutting this off initially. Because oh, the straight line extends a little further out on that one. Yeah, I mean this part goes further down. Yes. So. Uh, on one side usually you'll end up with those two separate and on one side it'll still join by that little okay. membrane so that it has there. Start on one side. Start on one and side and yes, you'll end okay. up with a little, a little butterfly looking thing. Yeah, file the rest that's, of it off. Yes, yeah. file it. Yes, yeah. got a little bit of filing to do, and that's it. Okay. Now, yeah. that's perfect for me as a lefty, but for you, it, this would be the easiest to do. Stand on this side. If you see space here, you're not at the right angle. You want to have that almost always. Try that with this finger. You're applying pressure where you want the material removed, but you do want to have that at attacking here. That way, you know you're perfectly straight. Perfect. Is that short strokes or long strokes? Again? You know, sometimes I'll grab it like further back a little bit so that I have more material up here. There you go, in, in a slightly longer stroke. As long as the pressure on your finger is concentrated right there, right. Oops. <laughs> that works. We even tried a disc sander, but it's very unpredictable what's going to happen. Those things are aggressive, and if it grabs the edge just right, it'll completely crinkle the edge in it. So. Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. Perfect. Now start to raise the handles upward. There you go. To go around it, it'll help quite a bit. There you go. Nice. Now flip it around. Okay. So I kind of pinched it. We're going to try to fix that. Grab both sides with the snips. Actually, I think you said a 22 inch. Yeah. Okay, now let's, let's, we're going to dress that up just a little bit with a file. Okay. We'll get it looking beautiful. Good. This side is okay, the other side just needs a little bit of TLC. A little bit of TLC. Okay. Feel the bottom edge. It's going better. Thank you, Eddie. Yeah, absolutely. That's a little bit better. This one. this one is about the same. It's a little bit pinched. You've got this one nicely trimmed. Yeah. I can see that pinch real good now that I step back. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the rule is. Step back and it works. Yep, that works. Now hold your marker and move the rib on it. Oh, okay. Mm. Gotcha. Like a new shoulder right? out. Fantastic. I'm glad you jumped to that while you're waiting on the file because we're going to have Steve and you working on the hinges. So, okay. Perfect. Okay. Get those done and we'll jump over here with Rose to the next step. Clico oh. Oh, yeah. and rivet the rudder spar, upper rudder ribs, and hinges together as shown in the parts manual drawing. So, here you're going to put together pretty much everything. The spar, you're going to attach the three ribs mm -hmm. to it and the hinges uh, as well to okay. the spar. So I've just got to lay it out here. It doesn't mean that uh, that's one spar. I think that's all you need. Okay, yes. We're going to do holes are up. 
doesn't matter. And the holes are up in the orientation. I was in remedial filing class, so Rich is going to show me how to press the bushings. To press those in at the press. Down parts. Here we go. Use a press before. Yeah. Just get it started. So just, when you feel it starting to go in, mm -hmm. I said just give it a nice nut. That's it. That's it. Easy I'm going to check this with the 3 16 bolt. Okay. And it's because we pressed it in, it got smaller with the diameter, so you have to file this out so it fits the 3 16 bolt. On the inside diameter, okay? Yeah. Got it. Fogging up. Can't see. Squat. Did you hear somebody say those were 31s right there? 31s? I don't think those are 31s. Oh, no, those look like 26. Mm -hmm. How about those tires? They're right there, man. It's pretty blue color there. Oh, there we go. Got it. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Now we got to make sure if it's a 3 16 bolt because it might have gotten smaller and we'll file it out if it doesn't. So, yeah, it's not going through. So It won't go through, so you'll have to... And it's on this side, and it's up to here. All you have is this tiny, tiny window. So you'll be grabbing a bolt like this. Mm -hmm. You'll be feeding it back in through here and trying to feed it in through those hinges. But you've got your stab here, so this is the only window you have. So if you have a lot of resistance, you're gonna be you're gonna be saying lots right, of those big rivets. That's about right. We're going to use this piece actually as a jig to drill our hole so that they match up perfectly. We have guide holes. Those are number 30 size holes that you see on this, uh -huh. on that spar, but they're, but they're not the final size, which they should be. So the first thing that, that we do is clean out the powder coat because your bolt might not even go through that. So I'd clean this one, this one, the middle one, and even this one, and these two down here. It's just powder coat that's, that's gotten in there, and your bolt usually won't go through there, mate. And it has sometimes. I'd test the bolt and see if it does. We might we might be lucky that it does go through. It chases through. No. And in this case, it's only powder coat. It's no. Okay. It takes nothing at all. They're all number eleven. This is a number eleven size bit. Every one of these. Every one of them is number eleven. I and I usually like to go go ahead and clean them all out. Go ahead and put. There you go. And like I say, it doesn't take a whole lot because it's just barely. It's just a hint of powder coat that's okay, in it. Yep. Uh, number 11. Wrong size that'll help. That is inserted correctly, yes. Just put pressure on yep. it, and yep. here we go. Yep, it's, it's seated perfectly. Go ahead like that, yeah. Go ahead, pull and wait. There you go. Yeah. That is it. All right. We'll be doing a lot of that on the front. That's why you get out of PDF. Yeah, the blue. I've fought them many times since Klamath Falls is just up the road. They'd bring us to to spank them around for uh, BFM a little bit. Yeah. See, he was in the war for a long time, and then he said, "Yeah, we used to fight the F-15 guys." Yeah, those are they're good pilots, though. I'll tell you what. Thank you. 
This is a little bit more than assembly. It's actually match drilling. We we only have those three holes. This is this okay. is the right pilot side. holes. They're not the right diameter because we can't get that kind of precision with welded parts. Sure. Um, so what you'll need to do, Steve, is drill these two okay. or these two. It doesn't matter which two. Okay. But only two. But only two. And then, and then match pin drill. it, yeah, pin it with those bolts that we were using a while ago. Just pin yeah. it in place and okay. then drill that last hole using this as a guide. Just go, go straight through okay. it as a guide and it'll put that last hole. Number 11, precise. right? Number 11. I'm just putting this in here, right? Yep. Oriented. That is absolutely correct. Oriented correctly. Yes. Now what you're Voila. looking for, yeah, well done. You've almost got a rudder. <laughs> um, what you're going to be looking for is putting a Clico about every three holes, okay. and then on the on the on the ribs, we want one at the leading edge, one trailing edge, and one somewhere in the middle, okay. one or two in the middle. Three, three, and then yep. three down there. Yep, I can do that. Are you having a hard time? Locating yeah. some of those. Well, because I feel like I'm damaged. I'm kind of damaging the hole. Uh, one way to do this is to creep up on it with other clicos. Yeah. From from below, okay. if you start getting these okay. in place, it'll start to pull these. Watch, okay. watch how those slowly yeah. start to migrate. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This one should. Good deal. Good deal. That one is now. There we go. Cool. Let's pull them in. Now Now you can remove the ones that you didn't originally sure. want in there, which sure. would be maybe this guy. We want one back here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that one. And that's, okay. that's pretty much, that's pretty good. Sounds good. Just waiting for a rivet gun. Is it okay just to hand hold this? Do it? Yes. Okay. Okay, this is important. The two things are level, reference each other. There's a digital level here. We made, we shimmed one to make sure that they were level. And then sandbags. And the other thing is when you're riveting this part, make sure that you have another block underneath that. Just like over there. Okay. Then we get this guy here. <coughs> and then this guy here. Okay. Okay. At this point, you can rivet. Rivet, and then the empty ones that didn't drop in easily. Okay. Yes. Rivet all these. Uh -huh. The ones that didn't get a rivet. Okay. Then after it's riveted, drill with a number 30 size bit with this guy. Okay. Just to clean the hole. Just clean it up. Rivet that one. Okay. And then we'll come back and we'll start exchanging. Got um, now one more thing, mm -hmm. we're going to be hurting for some blocks here in a second. Yeah. Um, do your leading edge only, okay. Steve. Don't do any of these yet. I'll come back yeah. and I'll help you because we need to support this end, okay? Yeah. And this end. Okay. So just do your leading edge, which is, that, that's rigid. Just do this side okay. and nothing else. Sounds and I'll good. come back. Thanks. Do these, don't do these yet. We'll okay. use that other support under this. But. Okay. But just do it, go ahead and do these. Okay. The one thing you also can do, Steve, mm -hmm. once you're doing the leading edge, you've got enough rivets in there. Now you can take all these out yeah. and finish the leading edge completely. So we know that these are straight. We haven't done anything with these. They're still parallel. The worst burrs that you have are going to be on the bottom side of this. You can feel that they're, they're, they're very full of burrs. Sometimes just running your fingers will remove them. 
obviously we don't want anything on the top surface, but that should come away with just blowing it out. Okay. But what I'll usually do is I'll take the sandpaper and I'll just run it along the, the bottom edge here. Okay. Ooh, like this a little bit better. That should do it. Just when you do this, be very careful with this edge on your fingers. Uh, sure. Try to hold them up as much as you can away from there so you don't risk slicing them back and forth on them. Good. Guillotine. And then we'll... Okay. Okay. Let's see how it works. Let's see how that works. Show them how it works. How, how do it work? I don't know. It works like this. So you oh. Turn left and you go left. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Too much. Probably the only fun. part. Yes, uh, this guy's got to go on the outside. Pull this guy out. Do the same thing. We'll put some weight on it. No. Yep. I gotta get that through my fix. Well, that's what holds it. It's still susceptible to being crooked if we don't yeah. force it to be laying straight oh, on those. The, uh, right on this. Right on here. Okay. This one was just. Uh, this is an extra that you'll use. You will need this one. You'll want to have that one when you rivet, for example, these, because you can still push it down. So you want to have the support under that one, and then move it over there. Okay. Put your rivets in and start riveting. Put the click. Clicos. Put a few clickos. You don't need to have that many, but okay. you need to have like one every five or six. Okay. Are you finding needing to drill out anything? Not, not a much? whole lot. Not on the final. Just take these with the it's not that much. Right. Sounds good. Here we go. Okay. And here we have Steve. He's building a rudder. This is the first time Steve has ever seen Cleco or Cleco pliers. Now that he knows what it is, he's going to use Clecos for everything. <laughs> hey, dog, come here. <laughs> I'm taking a picture. <laughs> Stoked. I'm close to getting my kit, so they're gonna keep my rudder here and pack it with my stuff. It's starting to get packed up next week. Eddie, thanks a lot, man. Hey, you're welcome. Dude, that was that was awesome. It was my pleasure. I had a lot of fun. I learned a ton. I hope to see you soon with an airplane. Well, yeah. More often, more likely than not, I'm gonna be calling you for like, what the heck is this? But that's awesome. That's what the forums are for, right? Absolutely. Anyway, this has been awesome. We're gonna go tour the factory. Okay. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you, you too, guys. See you. Thank you. Okay, we're out.